Nergis, uh, remind everybody, we've heard the term gravitational waves or ripples in space time. That's surely accurate, but it, I don't know that it helps. So how can you dig into that and unpack what's going on? Yeah, so uh, I think one of the ways we, we can think about that is it's very tempting to look out into space and think of empty space as a number of things that are just aren't true. Space isn't empty. Space doesn't do nothing. It actually has many, many dynamical properties, things that like it can curve, it can ripple, it can tear. And so that's really the wavy part of space-time. And it, the idea is, is that when we have objects that are massive, so they should have gravity. And if they just... When you say massive, you don't mean a brick or a stone. You're talking about black holes. Well, you know, bricks and stones would do the same thing, except it would be just a much, much smaller effect. And harder to measure. A way, okay. way harder. So our threshold is for what? I mean, our measurement threshold today. Our measurement thresholds today are not even ordinary stars like our own sun. Couldn't measure uh, that. No. So if we're looking for waves from from these kinds of objects, there are more things like neutron stars and black holes. So dense objects in the universe dense objects, where exactly. gravity is, is saying something. Yeah. yeah so objects where, that have so much gravity packed into a, a small volume that really the space around those objects is very bent. Okay. Have those objects tried Ozempic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> How do, you, how do we end up doing, doing a commercial for a That's pharmaceutical right. company? And we're not getting paid for it. We're helping it. the black holes slim down a little bit. They're very dense. They're causing waves and gravity. That's actually, We don't want them to slim down. For their work. But actually, isn't Hawking radiation a kind of ozempic for black holes? Yeah, they, it'll help them evaporate. Yeah, so, so, so we got a little mechanism. Go. So tell everybody about Hawking radiation. So Hawking radiation it comes about from the quantum mechanical properties of uh, of black holes. So the idea is that in quantum mechanics, we have a phenomenon where particles and antiparticles can uh, can be formed out of photons, and then they can crash together and become photons again. And Hawking radiation... So it's energy to matter, matter energy, back matter to energy. energy. Yes. E equals mc squared would prescribe how much of that is happening right. in any moment. Okay? Right. And Hawking radiation... E on one side... M on the other side, so we good. And then C is speed of light? Speed of light square. Yeah, yeah square. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, a, a phenomenon by which as you create these particles, uh, some of that energy can get radiated away. Where does that energy come from? Come from? It comes from the properties, of the gravitational properties of the black hole. What happens? So you're stealing gravity, at, matter out of the black hole, and thereby taking away some of his gravity. Yes. Okay. And, 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 and it just does that. And so, so it's a very slow version of Ozempic for black holes. That, <laughs> very, that's what started very, this. Very, very slow. Finish it there, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So, Nergis, can I take you back to when I was fourteen? All right. I came to the Hayden Planetarium. Here's mm -hmm. my office here. Mm -hmm. uh, I became director of the planetarium. I came here as a not kid. at fourteen. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, ultimately, I okay, became director. Okay. So, uh, I came here, and I uh, beyond the space show that I watched mm -hmm. at the time. They would have programs at night, which we still do, and with uh, speakers would come in and give lectures on modern astrophysics. So I would come in for that, and one of them was on black holes. That's when I first learned that gravity moves at the speed of light. Okay? You knew that when you were 14? Well, I didn't learn that till I was much older. <laughs> That's when I learned it. That's when I learned it. 15. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought about it, and I said, if... Gravity travels at the speed of light. Then how does gravity get out of a black hole? And the answer was a little fishy to me. <laughs> they said, well, there's a gravitational field that's always there. And it's a change in the gravitational field that moves at the speed of light. And I don't know if that's accurate, but that's what the dude told me. And otherwise, he couldn't get gravity out of a black hole where the black hole doesn't let anything get out, even the speed of light. And if the gravity moves at the speed of light, how is the gravity going to get out of a black hole? I just don't think of it that way. I, I think about gravity as the geometry of, of space-time. And the black hole is part of that geometry. And the things that we can know about, and this is true for light as well, 
are only things that are outside the horizon of the black hole. So what I've always been taught, and I think I learned this maybe even from Kip Thorne, uh, was that you, it's not meaningful to think about what happens inside the horizon because we don't even know if our laws of physics would hold there or not. And so when I think about gravity traveling at the speed of light, what's actually traveling at the speed of light is a gravitational wave, and it's only really meaningful outside of the horizon. She dodged that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't know what's in there, so who cares? She totally dodged that one. No, no, that's good. That's good. That's, that's an important distinction that physics had to mature into as a field to realize there are things that are beyond your knowledge, and therefore you, there's nothing you can say about it. Right. At all. Uh, for now, uh, you know, the, who knows what, which, what other forces we might discover that would describe something inside that horizon. Okay, but, but right now that's not, not happening. Right. Okay, so, but a change in gravity would then be a ripple, a change in that sort of thing that I'm feeling out there. Right. And, and we can just watch that at the speed of light. Because we'd say if we pluck the sun from the center of, the, of our solar system, you wouldn't know about it for eight minutes and 20 seconds. You'd still orbit We'd still feel the heat. We'd still feel the gravity. Everything would be normal. And then eight minutes, 20 seconds later, we fly off at a tangent in the dark <laughs> right. and freeze in interstellar space. Have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How that's going to happen. 